I'm standing on the southern tip of Italy, on the island of Sicily. Famous for great wines, the godfather, this mountain behind me. It's Mount Etna, and it's got a special place in my heart because it's the first volcano I ever visited. Mount Etna is the biggest and most active volcano in Europe, but there's something else that makes it so special. This is where volcanology began. The ancient Greeks who once lived in the shadow of Mount Etna created myths and legends to explain the volcano's violent behaviour. Some believe that Etna roared and shook because after a fierce battle, Zeus had managed to trap the many-headed monster Typhus beneath it. Others thought these volcanic rocks along the coast were thrown here by Cyclops from his forge under the mountain. But then a Sicilian-born Greek philosopher developed a more rational approach to the world around him. It was around 2,500 years ago when a hero of mine, Empedocles, came up with the idea of dividing matter into four main elements, earth, air, fire and water. Now that may not seem like a big step, but to me, Empedocles is like the father of geology because rather than relying on tales of battles between gods and monsters, he attempted to put some kind of order into our understanding of natural phenomena, like volcanoes, and he got his inspiration right here on Etna. Of course, we now know far more than the ancient Greeks. We know that volcanoes are actually caused by the Earth's incredibly hot molten core. Sometimes the heat causes hot, viscous lava to burst through the Earth's thin crust as a volcanic eruption. And that's just what has been happening here in Sicily for over hundreds of thousands of years. Some explosions have been so enormous that ash has been found near Rome, 500 miles away. In fact, the surface of our entire planet is made up of a number of moving plates, and Etna sits right on top of a danger zone where two plates collide. Here, one plate is being pushed under the other, creating around a fifth of the Earth's active land volcanoes, including Etna and its infamous neighbour, Mount Vesuvius. As every school kid knows, when Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, it covered the Roman city of Pompeii with a thick cloud of deadly volcanic ash. Its people were preserved by the ash where they fell, as if frozen in time, unchanged for nearly 2,000 years. And just as Etna was pondered over by the philosopher Empedocles, this mountain Vesuvius also had its own erudite observer. Pliny the Younger witnessed and wrote about its most famous eruption. To this day, volcanologists still describe highly explosive eruptions on the scale of Vesuvius as Plinian. But for me, Etna's the place to be. Not only is it almost three times taller than Vesuvius, but it's far more active. Whilst Vesuvius has been dormant since 1944, the eruptions on Etna just keep on coming. Mount Etna, Europe's highest and most active volcano. Is still as Europe's highest volcano, Mount Etna in Sicily, is showing signs of activity following a spate of tremors in the last... Molten year. lava pouring from Mount Etna in Sicily is continuing to threaten the villages lying in its path. Rivers of fire flow from Mount Etna's 11,000 feet high summit, swamping vineyards and olive groves. Yesterday, the lava moved at an alarming 50 feet an hour, but has since slowed down. It must be the most spectacular free show on Earth. It won't be easy to put things right. It's Etna's continuous activity that has made it endlessly fascinating to ancient philosophers and modern geologists alike. So that's Etna, but what about Empedocles? Well, he might have leaned towards rational thought, but he came to a rather odd end. The story goes that in order to prove his divinity to his followers, 
he threw himself into the crater at the top of Etna. The fire was meant to purify his body, releasing his soul for immortality.